Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. This is going to be a quick video, but I, I kind of wanted to show this off. Now, what I've got here is the Steam Deck, and you know, the number one complaint about this thing from me and a lot of other people online is its size. It's just way too small. It's not bulky enough, and it's a little annoying knowing that I can take this anywhere. I've taken it on a plane. I've put it in the car. It's very portable. It'll fit right in your backpack, and a lot of people just don't like this. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new handheld that fixes all of these issues. And I was lucky enough to get my hands on an early prototype, and it's known as the Deck 32. Now this thing has some absolutely amazing specs, and it might look a little larger than the Steam Deck, but it's only about four more ounces. This is coming in at 38 pounds, so it's not much more than the Steam Deck. And we've got a lot more screen real estate here, as you can see. It's actually got a 32 inch curved display. It's only IPS. I mean, it would have been really nice if they used an OLED here, but unfortunately it's IPS. It still has some really great coloration. It's 100% sRGB touchscreen. And when it comes to the built-in controls, we've got laser-based analog sticks and joysticks here. Much more accurate than hall sensors, and you'll never have to worry about drift. And when it comes to battery life, about three days. Not bad, especially given the specs here. When it comes to the CPU, we've got an i9-13900K. This one happens to have 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM running at 6,000 megahertz, but you can opt to get one with only 16 if you want to. It will bring the price down by a little bit. So we've got plenty of CPU to basically handle any game, and when it comes to the GPU, that's where this thing really shines because it's using an RTX 4090. It's a non-laptop variant, so we've got a full power 4090 in here. I mean, it does outperform the Steam Deck by a little bit, and we'll go ahead and get into a little bit of Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay. Right now, we're maxed out 4K Ray Tracing Ultra, and if you take a look at Afterburner, we're very close to getting a steady 250 FPS out of it. Would have been nice to get a little more at a 4K resolution. I mean, with these handhelds getting more powerful, I'd like to see around 400 out of something like this in the next revision. Ergonomics are absolutely amazing here. I mean, it's got a gyro built in, and when I say gyro, I'm not talking about the gyro where you move the whole unit around to kind of get some movement on screen. I'm talking about a built in weighted gyro to keep the top from falling over. So it does have spinning mass inside of it, but I mean, it's super comfortable to hang on to. I could play this for hours and not cramp up or anything like that. With the laser sensor based analog sticks and joysticks that they've added here, you won't have any kind of drift or anything like that. In fact, you can program these to kind of play the game by itself if you wanted to. And uh, you don't ever have to worry about input lag or anything like that. It's using laser technology here for those inputs. They've really put a lot of thought into this thing, and when it comes to price, it's only a bit more than the Steam Deck. The base model is $4,900, so you just throw a couple more dollars on top of what you were going to spend on a Steam Deck, and you can pick this thing up. It's going to outperform it all day long. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. I'll have a full review coming up real soon. And like always, April Fools.